Welcome everyone to my 100 days in a zombie apocalypse video, let's get on with it. While running around the city I did come across a courtroom and right beside the jury there was a chest with some good loot. It had black robes and also some good starting materials. In another chest I did also get even more materials, stone sword that I will face the zombies with. In this courtroom, I did feel like I was the jury for a little bit, but I had to continue on getting more loot. Upon running even more, I did actually stumble upon a very, very big house that did look promising, but I decided not to enter it, and that is because this sign did say, Keep out danger. This is my first day, there is absolutely no way I will actually go into a house like this, so I decided to actually run away. Upon running away from zombies, I did lock myself in a very, very nice looking house. While looting the house, I did check all the chests that I could, but they did not have any good loot apart from one chest on the second floor. Going up the stairs to the second floor, I did come into one of the rooms and there was a library. I did decide to actually get back here and then collect the books in a little bit because I will actually get myself an enchanting station going on very soon. A PPK pistol. It will prove to be very useful in this coming zombie apocalypse because I got already surrounded by zombies at one point. Having a gun at my defense does make me feel a lot more safe. Finally, I could sleep my first night in this bed that I found in some random house, but I did actually get some good loot, a gun, starting materials, food, sword, and even armor. This will prove helpful in the coming days. As the next day hit, I did go looting some more chests and I did actually find some good loot. I did find a flashlight and also a pickaxe. I will use the pickaxe to gather even more materials when I go into the mine, but for now this will do. The flashlight is also a very nice find because I will use it in the dark areas from now on. While I was running back home, I did notice that there were some zombies walking around, so I did decide to actually shoot them. Upon shooting them, I did get attacked by even more zombies, and that led me to believe that I think they react to my gunshots. So, it was time for me to actually get a very, very quick hideaway and sleep the night like this. And the next day I did find another building that I decided to loot, but there was one problem. The amount of zombies there are inside of the building and outside was tremendous. So I did decide to actually walk around the building, flanking the zombies and making them follow me. Then gather them in one place and get rid of them. As I made my way into the building yet again, I saw that there were even more zombies. It seems they didn't want to stop spawning in, so it does mean that I have to loot the chest and get out quickly, because this is a highly contaminated zone with a lot of zombies spawning in. Plus, the zombies are also increasing in difficulty nearly every 5 days, so the next one will be very soon. Looking around, I did find one chest behind the desk, and that chest had a literal backpack, some food, and ammunition. The backpack is very, very useful because I can store all of my loot inside of the backpack. It adds a lot of space that I can use to store things and also even craft things without requiring a crafting table. As I was going around looting some more buildings, one of the abandoned buildings did have a Mac. And I don't mean the computer, I mean the gun. I did not have a lot of ammunition for it, but that would not be a problem because soon I would find a literal weapon crafting table and also craft myself a lot of loot. Some bullets, some guns, and defeat a lot of zombies along the way. Going around some more, I think I went into a pastor's church or something of that sort and there were two chests with some good loot. But there was one problem with the mag gun. I did notice that it was wasting so much ammunition per second. The fire rate on this gun is tremendous. No wonder it kills zombies in one, in not even one but half a second. That's because this baby eats like 20 bullets a second. It's crazy. But another day was coming to an end and it was actually a really, really good day for me because I did find a lot of food, a lot of guns, some armor, compass and even more equipment with some more resources to help me along the way. Now it was time to actually get myself a base going really soon to protect myself against the zombie hordes. On the next day as I was running around I did notice one building and it was a very, 
very tall building. There was actually a helicopter parked right beside it, and I was hoping that the helicopter would spawn in some chests, but before I could see, I did get attacked by an animal, a boar, but he was infected, of course, because I'm pretty sure everyone is infected. I'm yet to see animals here, so that's really unfortunate. Hopefully, I will meet some bandits or even some survivors if I get lucky that I can team up with. I got inside the big building, and inside the big building there was a lot of rooms that I did check for loot. One of the rooms did have a chest with some good loot, and a helmet, and also some armor. But other rooms did prove not to be quite as useful, they mainly had food, supplies, and just the basic necessities. This was okay loot for beginners, and considering the zombies are mutating every now and then, they will become stronger if not already, and that will actually prove to be quite difficult for me if I'm not geared for the occasion. That means I should keep improving my loot every chance that I get. Running around in the city during the night is actually very dangerous, but luckily I did have my guns with me to get rid of the zombies. There was one but I was running out of ammunition, so I had to get a crafting table really quick. And not just a regular crafting table, but the one made for guns, to craft guns and ammunition. Crafting ammunition in itself is actually very, very easy. You just need iron ingots and also gunpowder. As usual, I continued looting and running for days, and one day I did get lucky in an apartment building because one of the chests did have a QBZ gun. The really unfortunate part is that it did not spawn in with a literal magazine, only a stock. And as we all know, a QBZ does not interchange stocks, so this was a very, very useless kind of spawn, but either way, I did pick it up and for a future weapon. As I was making my way to the rooftop, I did notice one major thing. The rooftop did have a sign SOS. This SOS sign did prove to me that the apocalypse was real and the zombie threat is legitimate. All of this just rattled my head a little bit as I was taken in that this city was abandoned, it was overgrown, there was absolutely no human in sight, well at least so far, only zombies and broken down buildings and cars. But there was one thing that I was going to find in this video and it might just help me survive the full 100 days. I made my way into some factory compartment of some sort, but that was a major mistake because this kind of open space did spawn a lot of zombies in, and that was major threat for me. I did not have enough ammunition for all of the zombies that just kept spawning in left and right, and that's because this zone is very dark. No light means a lot of zombies spawn. Walking into another building, it was already evening, but one chest did actually spawn in a few seeds and some corn. I did pick it up for future farming. There was one slight little problem though. My zombie kills meter does not go up at all if I kill the zombies. It only goes up, I'm sure, if I kill the actual vanilla zombies, which don't really spawn apart from very rare moments. So guys, if you see that I killed two zombies across all the videos, just know that I killed probably 200 of the special infected ones, which actually do spawn in. Walking around looting some more chests, I did not even know that I was going to actually sleep the night in this building, and that's because it's raining outside. When it's raining, the regular zombies do spawn in, and there's just way too many of them to battle them. That means it's best if I don't travel in the rain, and also that I'm sleeping on a church or beside a temple of some sort. This will hopefully grant me some sort of protection and keep me safe. Looking around, I did not see anything special apart from just walkers walking just like usual. Going down as usual, the zombies already somehow got into the building, so I had to get rid of them really quickly, and I also accidentally killed a parrot. That was the most accidental thing ever. I did not even notice it until writing the script for this video, because I did not know that that was a parrot. I thought that was one of the infected bad birds with red eyes. So I think I killed my only friend. It's time to go to sleep, but this day did actually prove to be quite again useful as I did get quite a bit of loot and even more guns in this time period. 
Walking around, I did encounter a stadium, and there were just so many zombies on the stadium, and there was also a skeleton king, as usual. If there's a horde, that means there's a skeleton king. Fortunately for me, this was not the first time that I saw him, but this was the first time that I did manage to kill him and get his loot. That's because I did finally have machine guns, pistols, and rifles on my disposal. The Skeleton King did prove to be quite difficult, even though I did have guns, and that's because he does a lot of damage, especially when you don't have any armor such as I do. I don't have very good armor, I don't even have a full iron set. Just before looting his chest as I killed him, I did decide to actually clear a little bit of the zombies around me in case they came and attacked me from behind, because I can get one-shotted and that would be the end of the video. That would be GG endgame for me. Fortunately, I'm smarter than that and I do know how to survive the full 100 days because this is not my first rodeo. There were times when I did fail the 100 days and I had to redo like a days of work. As I was just minding my own business, mining in the mines, because my resources did get finished off, they got depleted, I did get attacked by a boar inside of the mine. This was actually not a normal occurrence, because the boars aren't supposed to be spawning in, nevertheless charging in very compact quarters, unlike the bottom floor with lava, diamonds, ground level type stuff, and they just should not be spawning in there, but one of them did, and that did keep me by surprise. Either way, I did continue on mining some more iron, looking for diamonds, even cooler materials, and also redstone, because my base will have super duper defense systems with turrets that will shoot the zombies in case I need to shoot them, and everything of that sort is actually powered with redstone. Redstone is the powerhouse behind the Minecraft's biggest technologies. As I got back to the surface, it was already nighttime. Fortunately for me, I did have a bed ready to sleep in, and also some chests ready to put my loot in. But either way, it's time to smoke up, get the furnaces running, and get my materials sorted to get some more loot, craft for myself some better armor, some better equipment, and even more guns and bullets for when I do find that crafting table. For now, I rely solely on finding ammunition inside of chests, and that's actually very, very difficult, because ammunition does not regularly spawn in chests, only rarely. That means I have to use my ammunition very sparsely and not shoot it all at one time. I have to walk around zombie hordes and just be a sneaky little survivor. And again, before sleeping, I did recount my past days kind of achievements, and they were again very successful. I did go mining, found some more materials, more resources, and I was ready to hit the sack with a smile on my face knowing that I did work a full day. I will use what I gathered for my base in the near future. On the very next morning, I did get the iron and also all the resources from the furnaces and decided to craft myself an iron set. Finally, I was geared a little bit better, considering the zombies upgraded a few times from the very first day already. They do more damage, they have more health, and they take, take longer to kill. Either way, I do look like an absolute warrior, a champion ready for anything. Although one thing I would change, and that is my armor. My armor could have been improved with a diamond armor set, or even a literal netherite set. But that's a long way to go still, because right now I only have iron. A few days I was running around the city looting some more stuff, but then I did stumble upon a car. Finally, this car did not look like it was made from Minecraft blocks for kind of uh, the city's sake, but like an actual modded vehicle. And this vehicle proved to be very, very good for my future. Although there was one problem, the vehicle did not have any fuel as I found it. So that actually already made me a quest to go and look for fuel. For that, I need to get to a gas station and get some gas canisters filled up. I was really hoping that the car would not get stolen or kind of respawn while I was trying to get loot for it. But to get loot, I need a jerry can, and that was the thing that I was looking for. Although I did not find it a jerry can, I did find quite a bit of ammunition and also a scope. 
for my gun. This is very, very useful and a very good spawn, even though considering it's pretty easy to craft when you have the crafting table, but the crafting table itself is like the biggest thing that you have to find. It's rarer than diamonds and it's literally the best thing that could ever happen to me if I was ever to find one because I wouldn't have to rely on scavenging so much. Right now I'm just a scavenger scavenging but I like to be self-sustaining at some point. Running some more, I did find a train right in the middle of a train depot. This train was actually brand new because I was running here plenty of times before, but I never saw this train standing here. So it's definitely brand new. I'm not sure how it got here, but it's definitely really cool. And I'm looking forward to see more survivors and even more trains along the way. This does make me reminisce the past where we all used to ride trains and just vehicles in general and the general population. It's sad that the zombie apocalypse hit, but what can you do? I did get into one of the buildings and one of them did finally have a literal jerry can. This is amazing use as the jerry can I will use to fuel up the vehicle, although I do need to find, find a gas station still. Still, this is a really, really good find and I will use the vehicle to the best of my ability to get as much ground in as possible to loot as many chests and buildings and just get even a better surrounding area around me. It's maybe about time that I do scope out an area for my future base. Getting back to the car and shooting the zombies around it, I did spend quite some time and ammunition on this. But nevertheless, it's all worth it in my opinion, because the car is such an amazing find. I'm gonna have a lot of fun and I'm gonna make absolute use of it. It also looks like a mini car, not gonna lie, it looks funny. It's definitely not a truck or even just a regular sedan. It's more like a mini car for small people, for small towns, but that might mean that it has a very good manu maneuverability across the city. And yeah, the car drove absolutely fantastic. The speed that it gained was really nice, and also the controls are very easy. This will definitely prove to be useful down the line in me surviving 100 days and outrunning hordes whenever necessary. I slept the night in some random place and then got myself onto a highway. I was hoping that the highway would have even more vehicles perhaps and something a little bit bigger than this small car. Either way, the car does attain very good speeds and I will continue on looking for more resources and loot. I spent quite a significant amount of time on the road looking for a gas station and also traveling the city. Turns out even with a car, this place is not tangible, well, uh, manageable to get from point A to point B of the map in a very short amount of time because of the huge size of this map. It's absolutely crazy and the fact that I do have a car now is super. Driving some more around town and looting some buildings, I did finally come to the airport, although it was already evening. Unfortunately for me, there were quite a bit of zombies, and that is because they spawn in because of the very even terrain ground. But that did not stop me, because I'm here to loot, so I decided to actually get into one of the buildings. Although one boar just wouldn't let me do it. He kept chasing after me and, and he just kept on going in circles and it was the most funniest thing I've ever done in Minecraft. Eventually I did get out and finish him off. As I made my way into one of the buildings or hangars, I did decide to actually be very careful because I was already in quite a bit of days into the video and if I would have died here, this would be like the worst possible outcome ever and I don't know how I would, how I would even forgive myself for being so blatantly not safe because this these videos do actually rely on the safety aspect. If I don't survive, then that means the video is ending. So I better survive the full 100 days or it just doesn't count. I'm not one of them YouTubers that does like 80 days when I die, no, 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 we do the 100 days here, but yeah, I did encounter one chest with some good loot also, some boots, an adrenaline syringe, and some more good stuff. The adrenaline syringe works like a charm, I was running at speeds of light when I took it. 
On the next few days, I was just traveling around and then I did encounter a farm. This farm proved to be very, very unique. The amount of area, open terrain all around the base was absolutely insane. There was also a hangar with a what was supposed to be a tank. And the tank was not functional, not operational, but it was still very cool. And I was hoping to find some really good guns and some good ammunition and resources around this farm. It seems the farmer was a very, very rugged survivor to the point where his defense would have been a tank if need be. Driving past the farm, I did encounter another smaller type of farm and this place did have a literal dog on a leash. I have no clue how the dog survived, it must have stayed inside a hut, but there were also horses around a house. I was actually thinking that there was a survivor in this house because the zombies did not touch the horses and there weren't many of them, but the base did look pretty abandoned and it looked like there was no one here. Fortunately for me, the dogs weren't attacking me aggressively and the horses did not run away. So if I could get a horse seat, I could ride one of the horses and not a car. But although I do prefer a car if I'm being honest. But still, the dog on the leash does make me believe that there are survivors in this world somewhere, seeing as the dog does, just doesn't spawn in by itself regularly. Although it could happen because it did spawn in in its own dog house. Considering this place does not have a lot of zombies spawning in, I did consider this as my base. So from now on, this place would be my base of operations, up to a point of course, but that's for you to see in the future. Either way, the balcony view from this place was absolutely amazing, and I was really happy with this place. Especially that now I have horses, and even someone's, but not mine, dogs around the base. That was really good, and hopefully if I get a little bit of bones, and get some more wolves out in, in the wild, I can even get some dogs for myself. I did also find someone's journal, which was really weird. When I decided to check out the surrounding buildings, I did actually encounter what was I believe to be an angar, a some sort of facility to store the seeds and bread and other farming equipment. I can actually get a farm going on here and I will actually do that in the near future. You guys will see that I will find an amazing thing that will help me become the ultimate farmer here. And it's gonna be an absolutely amazing experience because I did manage to find an endless food supply and also a perfect for myself in a zombie apocalypse. So these past few days are coming to an end and finally I can hit the bed in my new base. This is gonna be actually my first night sleeping here and considering this base is an absolute wonder and a wonderful place to make my base at, this is definitely the place I'm gonna stay at and build up the fences around. What caught me off guard was the very next day that I actually woke up, there were so many zombies outside and also my horse was gone which was really really sad, but there were so many zombies around I could not believe it. This place was supposed to be a safe haven away from the zombies. How did it turn out that the zombies managed to find me, even in this desolate remote place? I am no longer in the city, I am way, way beyond the countryside with farmers, all around me and also a farming area for myself. I did remember that this farm also had a stable, so I did decide to actually make my way down to the stable to check on the horses if they are okay, but the, the zombies all around my base did make it a little bit difficult because there were so many of them. And as you guys know, I try not to waste a lot of ammunition on just killing zombies because they just continue spawning in. I only kill if I must because I don't want to spend my materials and resources just on random stuff which doesn't matter. In the next days I did make my way into a some kind of port, there was a river going through the city and on the other side of the city there was actually a nuclear city which did cause me radiation, but this port around this area did prove to be very 
very cool and it had very unique loot. Although there was one slight little problem, the amount of zombies spawning in, again because the area is so clear, the zombies just spawn in and they straight up run at me. There is nothing blocking them, no buildings, no nothing, no walls, no fences. They just see me and they run at me and it's just a very, very tough time for me. So it's best if I actually make myself a little bit smaller of a target by getting on top of a ship to look for even more loot, which is what I did exactly. When I did finally manage to get on the boat, it was already raining and evening hours were setting in. But there were also zombies on top of the ship, so my plan, in case of uh, running away from the zombies on the ground to get a higher kind of defense position did not work out, especially since the zombies were spawning in even in more loads because of the rain. Because of the rain, there is a higher spawn rate. And also, let's not forget that the zombies are way more powerful as they increase in difficulty as time passes, which did make my survival even more difficult. In addition, I didn't get any new loot in a very, very long time, which also made me a little bit concerned for my defenses, considering my defenses weren't that great. I still don't have enough diamond defenses, I'm still wearing iron pieces, which are pretty useful, although I do have one single piece of netherite loot, and that is my literal boots. The boots are very, very nice. I believe they are protecting me, and they are the only piece that is good right now in protecting me, but upon scavenging more of this ship, I didn't find any good Good loot. What's the saddest part is that this ship could no longer sail on the open seas. The sea breeze hitting my face, the passengers laughing, everyone is happy and smiling, but nope, this the zombie apocalypse, it's an unfortunate time for us, but luckily for me, I do keep my head high and I will continue looking for the zombie cure. Although the captain did have a literal fishing rod that I need to check out, perhaps the enhancement on it is very very good and I'll get like a super super rare fish, a golden fish and a diamond fish, who knows. But yeah, this ship proved not to have very good loot. Despite its size and its appearance, it did not have any military style rifles or weapons or even materials for me to gather. Upon sleeping the night, I did find another remnant of someone else living on this island, and that is this little thing here. This little dog does not supposed to spawn, but it does have a few boats, a chest with some random, random loot, and also boats that I can get up and cruise with all around the waters. But this again is not normal, and this leads me to believe that maybe I am not alone on this island. Perhaps I'm even living in some one's base. Maybe they died, maybe they despawned, maybe they quit, but either way, I did find their dog, I found their base, their farm, and I am already living inside of their house. While on the water, I did see quite a bit of good stuff. There is a literal lighthouse that is so big and I need to check it out 100%. Perhaps it will have some good lead when I do check it out, but what piqued my interest was another house. I was hoping for some really good loot, but what I got was a few zombies and some not so good chests. Despite that, I did still held my head high and I did decide to actually use the fishing rod that I got from the ship to fish for some fish. I know that this isn't the best way to get food in this world. I know that also pigs and cows don't spawn in that much at the moment, but they do spawn in very rarely on some occasions, but they're just not spawning in inside of towns and cities. Still, I looked through every room and there was absolutely nothing for me to find. Now it was about time that I went ahead and started fishing. I know I'm not a fisherman, but I'm also not a farmer yet officially because I'm still yet to start my farming days. So for now, I can fish a little. I did go into my head a little bit while I was fishing, and as you guys could probably see, it was already nighttime. So I did get some good fish, but although I did think about the future and the base that I was gonna build, and the base, I need to get some defenses up and running forward in the near future for me to not get attacked by the zombies. I was 
already attacked in the morning when I woke up. Hopefully that's not gonna happen again, but if it will, having some lava defenses, some turrets all around me would always be useful and nice to have. And it was time to hit the sack as usual, although this time it would not be on my base. It would be in this kind of fishing area spot. But although I do also have to say that these few days were really, really good and I'm starting to get the hang of living in the apocalypse and finding meaning. A lot of days passed and I did got myself on a literal warship and that means a literal warship. The warship did have quite a bit of zombies on it so I did have to look around every corner and there were also so many chests with so many loot all around it that I didn't even know where to look. In the end I did find quite a bit of guns, quite a bit of ammunition and also some good materials just in general to help me with uh, rebuilding and also upping up the defenses of my future base but the best part by far was actually getting to know that these endeavors where I'm going out and looting every time are always super super nice. I always get rewarded for going out and looking for good stuff and that's the most amazing feeling. Not knowing what you're gonna get and then walking into your random building and bam there's a literal warship go ahead loot the warship and then you get a literal gun. That's the best feeling in the world although I do have to say that I still did not find a gun crafting station, so I'm still very dependent on actually finding loot and ammunition from chests, which is not nice. But I will make do with it for a little bit. While running around this ship, I did notice one thing, that the most dangerous zombie that you can actually encounter is not a witch or a gravedigger. No, 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 it's actually the mushroom infectious zombie, because they can actually infect you through blocks. So if they're right above you or right below you, they will still go to your position and spit their poison, so to speak. And you cannot kill them, because I did not even know uh, what direction that guy was attacking me from. It could have been through the walls, through the ceiling, through the ground, wherever. But either way, I did continue looting the chest, and the chest had really, really good loot. A lot of ammunition, a lot of chests, and a lot of resources, and also a lot of just junk in general, to be honest, that I don't need. I don't need the amount of cobwebs I could have found, although now I do understand that I could have used the cobwebs for even greater protection around my base, which is something I'm gonna note down for the future. One chest in particular had a literal crossbow hanging on top of it, which proved to be like a 50 cal by the name, but it is just a crossbow, so you just have to kind of make yourself believe it. Either way, I do hope that I can find a 50 cal in the near future, but this crossbow will prove very nicely in the near future, especially with the amount of arrows that I can pick up from the chests. I loaded up the crossbow and gave it some shots and turns out the crossbow is pretty good, plus it reloads very quickly, so I'm pretty sure that's an enhancement of some sort, because it's a really, really good find and I will definitely keep it even though I do have guns, a crossbow still is very fun and if it does a lot of damage, I can use it against very high threat enemies like the Skeleton King if he ever appears again. And I did encounter my first target, a zombie that I was going to test the crossbow on, and the crossbow does kill zombies in two shots. So if I ever, ever run out of ammunition, I can absolutely use this crossbow to kill any zombies around me, because it does really good damage, and it's definitely better than a sword, considering that it's a long-range weapon. But either way, I did continue just looting the warship for more and more loot, and turns out the warship is actually so huge, it took me a couple of days just looting and running. I did even sleep one night because of the amount of chests that I have to loot. There's just so many stuff that I can pick up, and just get looting. This is the dream of any looter as myself, so this was definitely a very good find, and I can use all of these resources to build up the fences for my base and make myself feel a lot safer in the near future.
The warship also had a floor for vehicles, and these vehicles included jets, cars, and all of that good stuff, but they were not drivable, unfortunately, but that was not my intention from the very start. My intention is to actually find the best loot that I can inside of this place. If there is a very good loot here somewhere hidden, I will absolutely find it, despite the size of this warship. Either way, the amount of zombies that did actually attack me on this floor and just kept spawning in right in front of me did scare me a little bit bit so I did decide to bail because the amount of ammunition that I was spending on these hordes did not prove to be very useful for all of this time especially with the zombie spawn rate that was occurring I did decide that was maybe the best choice to just run away and maybe get all the loot that I did get and just leave it at that because I did get some really nice loot and my backpack is practically full of everything that I found. At one point my health did get really low so I decided to use my mag and also my pistol to get myself a little bit further away from the zombies because my health was really really low. I did eat one golden apple which did regen my health quite a bit back and I could continue you fighting on the zombies for a very very short time so running away from the zombies I ran up the floors away from them and I did like greet a literal station the commanding station I believe it was called for these warships but either way it was an absolutely amazing sight although it was nighttime so it was really difficult to see the tremendous size of this baby this warship was actually really really big and it's just a spectacle to remember I did think it was about time for me to leave the warship because I did spend quite a bit of time going through every floor, nuke and cranny, looking for every chest that I could, but either way I did get a lot of loot and I was very happy with everything that I got. Although one, one little problem, I was still on a paddle boat, I know literal motored boats exist in this world, but I just didn't find it yet, so I'm stuck here using a paddle boat unfortunately. And it's also a very long ride onto the shore. Upon returning home, I was greeted by, again, zombies all around my base, which was really unfortunate. I chose this spot because I thought it was safe, but it turns out it was not so safe as I once thought. Maybe it was only day one where I didn't even see any zombies spawning in, so I guess I got lucky, but either way, if it's my base, it's my base. Although I do feel kind of bad for the horses that had to be kind of immigrated down into the stables, because they did actually get run around by zombies all around and it was just a bad experience. When I finally got home, I did decide to empty out my chest from all the loot that I got. It's not even all of the loot. I had to leave quite a bit back behind me because it was just so much. I had to choose whatever loot was best for me to take. And another day is coming to a close, so hopefully I did make some good progress. I feel like I did, so luckily for me I did get a lot of good loot yet again, so I'm really happy with that. And hopefully the next few days will be actually as good, just like this one. Now one very cool thing that I found on the warship was actually a literal firework works. So I did use the fireworks, but I think they attracted quite a bit of zombies because they just kept running at me from nowhere and that was actually just a crazy time. So I think from now on it's best if I don't use the fireworks because I think they, they attract the zombies pretty good. Somehow, after scavenging for a few days, I did actually get to a military zone and the army base did actually have a new gun for me waiting and it's an M34 I believe and it's just a beast of a gun. I was really happy when I found it and it's really lucky that I was just even recording this moment. This is actually my OBS footage so I re normally record from Shadowplay but my OBS managed to capture this single moment and it could have been lost but nope here it is and I just got really lucky with this gun and it's just an amazing find. With this gun I can survive any zombie horde ever. Of course not like 1000 of them or 500 but like a 50 mob horde definitely easily killable with this baby. 
going around the military base some more. I did also encounter even more rooms, which were very bizarre, you could say. And yet, yeah, this actual military base did prove to be quite good with loot, although the zombies just couldn't stop spawning in. I really hope it's not the military personnel, I just hope it's the zombies roaming and the military is somewhere out there, still surviving, still fighting the good fight, and uh, we're gonna prevail in the end game. But hopefully, I can find a cure even without their help at some point. I slept the night and also decided to go out in the morning only to be met with a horde of zombies from nowhere and these zombies were actually the different kind. I think they maybe were coded in in the map to spawn in because their kill counter did actually count. So finally my kill counter was going up and yet these zombies were not the regular kind. They were actually the vanilla zombies and they are again not supposed to be spawning in by themselves but I guess they were programmed on this map to spawn in so this was still a very cool experience and uh, I did kill them although I would have completely get an wrecked and it would suck so bad if I did not have my super duper guns if I did have my guns I would have completely gotten obliterated at this point and after killing the last few zombies, I decided to pick up my stuff and leave this place because this place does seem pretty dangerous and considering there is no military personnel here, only military equipment that I did loot already, I did get lucky and I think I got what I came here for so it is maybe about time for me to go back to my base. I got into one of the doors and the iron door was actually hiding some sort of railway system and the railway system was actually really really cool I never wrote it before but this is actually like the coolest thing ever so you get a car you push it and then you go flying and I actually got scared quite a little bit while riding it but either way it was a very pleasant experience but as everything goes I did have to go back to my base in the end I did decide to go to the mine and I did actually find some diamonds right beside the lava pit. That was actually a really good find and I will use these diamonds to actually craft myself even better equipment. So a better pickaxe and even a better sword. Also I need some more armor definitely because my armor is currently not so good. It's iron and iron is not as good as diamonds of course. When I was running back home, I did actually notice that there was a chest, but I could not stop to loot all of it. In fact, inside the chest there was a compass and also a potion of harming. And I couldn't pick up the compass even though I really wanted, because there were so many zombies after me because it was the middle of the night. So I had to keep my eyes peeled and watch out for any danger. When I finally did get back home, I was really, really happy because it's been such a long time since I was in my base and I could actually finally get to smelting all the resources, all the materials that I did collect out in the real world and this actually meant that I could upgrade my loot finally, which was about time considering I was still wearing iron armor. My chests are getting overfilled so I should probably get a literal storage facility somewhere in the base. That calls for, for an upgrade and I will definitely make an upgrade to my base in the near future. I was really happy that my adventure did come to an end and that means I could finally get my stuff sorted and also craft a diamond set with all the diamonds that I found. That's right, I found a lot of diamonds while out adventuring and that meant that I could finally get myself a literal set. And that's actually great news because the zombies are becoming increasingly dangerous and with a better armor set I will actually survive more days. If it comes down to it, there's like a horde attacking me or a big zombie is after me. I will feel a lot safer. Finally did craft myself, although only two diamond pieces, which is unfortunate, but I will get more diamonds in the near future. Either way, there's still a lot of upgrading to do as a netherite armor that I could actually attain, but I could also replace all of my other pieces as well. Either way, I was really happy with my loot for now, and also because of the zombies being mutated practically every 5 or 10 days, the zombies get a lot stronger, and that means I have to actually keep upgrading my loot every time that I get. 
I did actually hear quite a bit of zombies outside and upon looking out the balcony I did also notice that I was getting surrounded. I'm not sure if this was the actual horde that was going to get me this night but I did disperse them by, by actually killing them during the daytime. Well, the evening time you could say. And the zombies did prove to be quite difficult. There were quite a big variety of zombies. They, they were poisonous, normal zombies, witches and also even small type zombies that disappear. So it was really really difficult but because of my new gun because of my super super good machine gun it did actually prove to be quite not difficult with my baby although I do have to craft some more ammo for it because ammo is running out and it's really hard to craft but this baby here saved me for today which is I'm happy with while traveling I was looking for more ammunition, resources and guns but I did actually get surrounded by some zombies out of nowhere and they were coming almost from this very very abandoned house. Upon entering the house I did actually notice that the house did not have any good loot unfortunately for me. But I did also get some food from it and it was an okay find. Although not what I'm looking for as I am looking for ammunition, guns and also resources to craft and better myself for survival. It's unfortunate that not a lot of houses have very good loot but that's the part of the game. Searching for more loot, I did come across a gas station, and the gas station did actually prove to be very, very useful. There was a literal gun that I found, an M24, and I packed the baby up with some ammunition, although there was one problem. I was really far away from my base and going back to my base would actually take a few days and nights that I did not want to spend. Also if my ammunition would have run out I wouldn't have enough ammunition to actually battle through a couple of hordes of zombies during the time to actually get back to my base and get even more ammunition crafted. Although I am pretty certain that I will not get attacked by super mega big hordes. Upon opening some more chests, I did find even more ammunition and even more materials. It's really sad that this gas station was abandoned such as this, but that's the way of the zombie apocalypse. And it's not my choice. The only thing I can do is actually try and survive myself and maybe even cure the zombies somehow. While rotting during the night time I did encounter a few zombies in the middle of the city and did decide to actually test out my M24. This new gun was actually really really good and it's almost my new favorite gun because it's super powerful. It one shot zombies and it's also long distance. It has a tremendous scope and an amazing magazine capacity. I had so many ammunition for it that I could actually defeat a whole horde with it. I did actually get into a house and this was actually a housing complex. I did not know if it would have any good loot but I did actually decide to loot everything that I could and I did actually notice that there were some cameras on the outside and also inside of the building which was super super weird but I did actually loot everything that I could and even though this was a mansion I did actually enjoy being here. There were also some traps that nearly got me but luckily did not deplete all of my health. When I was going back home, I did actually encounter a vehicle and that vehicle was a tractor. This tractor did actually prove to be quite useful in my journey in this video, but it is a very, very beautiful find and it even had fuel when I first got it. All that's left is for me to actually get even more fuel to it, although there is one thing that I'm disappointed with and it's the speed. But I'm pretty sure the tractor can actually do a lot more maneuvers and also perhaps even farm the ground which I will find out if there are any trailers that I can find to plow the ground and get even more bread and just become a farmer in a zombie apocalypse. But either way, for now, for this moment I was really, really happy that I did actually get a tractor. Upon getting back to the base I did actually notice that there was a literal field right in front of my base and this proved to be quite useful considering that I did now have a tractor. All that was left is for me to find an actual trailer and use the trailer to plow the fields and also get some seeds going and even get some bread. An endless food supply would never hurt me. But upon getting back to my base I was actually pretty disappointed with the amount of zombies there were. I was getting chased by witches, there were creepy zombies, small zombies, big zombies, even slimes 
get going at me. But that all did not actually get into my base, it was only outside of my base, which was okay, but still, I had to get home defense systems, I'm pretty sure, to get rid of the threat outside of my base. Finally getting back to my bed, I was really happy with the progress that I made. I did find a tracker, a new gun, and also a lot more materials, but there was one problem, the zombies around my base that, I, that were still there. There was actually a lot more of them than ever. That needs to be fixed immediately, and I will get on it in the next coming days. At some point, I did not even notice that there were actually two Skeleton Kings that this spawned in. It was a really, really unfortunate moment, but it seems I was getting overrun by a horde of zombies. Two Skeleton Kings is no joke. They both can attack me at one time and actually hit me over and over and over again. And also, they spawn in quite a bit of zombies that act as hordes. It was actually a very fierce battle, even with my guns. I know that Minecraft with guns is supposed to be easy, but not in this mod pack. Considering the amount of zombies, their health, and also how hard they hit. Even inside of my base, I was not safe because they were somehow coming in, and I did accidentally break my window, which caused even more to flow in. But, either way, I was actually getting really, really overrun, and this could have been the end of the video. Fortunately, it was not the end of the video. Upon looting the chests of them, I did actually get even better loot, better equipment, which was really, really nice, but there was one single problem. I did see these zombies while driving on my tracker, so something leads me to believe that their spawn rate somehow is linked if you saw them or not, because I did drive past one of them at least at one point when I was driving on my tracker back to my base. They could not have followed me, there's no way that's possible, but they definitely did spawn in, because I drove past them somehow. This is it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it, it was me as always Frosty Max. if you enjoyed the video make sure to hit that subscribe button and also like the video. Leave a comment with your suggestions for the next video as I read them and this video was actually suggested by one of my loyal subscribers, so thank you for joining the family and I hope I'll see you boys in the next one and as always guys, peace, see you in the next one.